Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. The Second Amendment is an important part of the Bill of Rights. It is designed to protect our liberties. The founders clearly understood the reason for the Second Amendment. Some liberal bureaucrats still don't get the point. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, the Second Amendment is the right to keep and bear arms, and it is designed to prohibit a tyrannous government from getting too much control. The Second Amendment is designed to keep the government in check. That's why it's in the Bill of Rights, and certainly our founders knew more than most people about why it's important to their liberty. And I think that's why we see so many, um, for lack of a better term, tyranny-prone um, government officials, our president comes to mind, pushing a radical gun control laws that would remove, that would essentially do away with our Second Amendment guaranteed liberties. But, you know, in addition to pre- preventing a tyrannical government, the Second Second Amendment also guarantees an individual's right to individual security. You know, as they often say, um, when uh, seconds matter, the police will be there in minutes. Uh, <laughs> and and, and that's, that's true. If someone breaks into your home, you have an absolute right to defend your home and the lives of your, yourself and your family members. And so we have an absolute right to, to bear arms. This is not negotiable. The, d- despite executive order after executive order from this president and radicals like Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid trying to yank our guns uh, uh, away, the reality is that if you remove uh, legal ownership of, of guns and, and which is guaranteed not just by the Second Amendment, but by God, uh, then, uh, as they often say, if, if guns are outlawed, only criminals will have, only outlaws will have guns. Well, and, and when you're talking about guaranteed by God, the, the Second Amendment, not per se, but the right that underlines it is, which is obviously the right to life. And uh, the Second Amendment is designed to protect your right to life. It is a right to life provision in that it is a pro-life provision because therefore you have a right to self-defense. And that's what the Second Amendment is all about. You have a right to be able to have arms. And why would you want to have arms? Well, you might want to shoot food, certainly, but at the very core of it is uh, you really have the right to defend your life. Yeah. That is a core principle. It is part of the natural created order. It is an inalienable right, and that's why they put it in there. But you, you have certain absurdities that take place. Uh, of course, I think the vast majority of people believe in the Second Amendment. But there's some uh, absurdities such as this particular one where a second grader was suspended for a day because what? He used his finger as a pretend gun. And as a result of that, the uh, eight-year-old was sent home by administrators at a school in Florida because the gesture was considered an act of violence (laughs) and against their code of conduct that prohibits students, they say, from playing with invisible guns. This is the inanity that is liberalism, that is progressivism. The, you know, we talked uh, last week a little bit about uh, a reductio ad absurdum. When you take things that don't make sense to begin with to their logical or illogical absurd conclusion, here's what you arrive with. When you have this knee-jerk, zero tolerance, uh, you know, no guns, that you, you suspend a second grader f- for, you know, making a, a gun sign, you know, with his hand. When I was a, a kid, we played cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians. Everything was a gun. <laughs> Everything, every stick I found was an assault rifle. You, you play these things. But, you know, Matt, going back quickly to what we were talking about, about God God's, our God-given right to defend ourselves. You know, Jesus himself uh, told the, the disciples, you know, when you get out there on the road, if, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and get a sword. That wasn't so that they could open letters. It wasn't a letter <laughs> opener. That was to defend themselves. And imagine if today's administration had been in place then. You'd have to fill out, you know, forms and triplicate, get a background well, you'd have to check, get a concealed, weapon, get a concealed permit. weapon permit to get your sword, go through a, an extensive background check. And me, in the meantime, the bad guys are running around chopping heads off with swords, you know. <laughs> 
that's the, <laughs> where we are today. You know, the, the left just doesn't get it. Here in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, there was a, a student who was uh, a second grade student. His name was Josh Wells. He was seven years old. A real threat to the elementary school because uh, this Josh, uh, he nibbled a strawberry filled pastry into the shape of a gun. And uh, he took the pastry and he, he said, uh, bang, bang. And as a result, a uh, little second grade boy was uh, banished from the premises for two days. Well, you know, if, if a strawberry pastry isn't menacing, I don't know what is. You know, I mean, it's this again, it's the absurdity of liberalism. And we got a call at Liberty Council from a parent whose uh, sons were playing out in the front yard. And the school bus comes up there, and uh, I think they were playing with Nerf guns or something like that, just some, something that they were playing out in the front yard. It was uh, obviously uh, their own yard. Yeah. It was their front yard. And, and they got disciplined uh, by the school. And the school says, well, uh, this is near a bus stop, so when they come out near the bus stop, even though it's your front yard, they're now in the jurisdiction of the school. So the school apparently has jurisdiction, according to these people, of the front yard. In their own front yard. Of this family's home. And uh, for them playing with these uh, play toys, uh, they got disciplined. Yeah, you know, it, it's easy to laugh at the absurdity uh, uh, surrounding this issue and others when it comes to, quote, progressivism, because it's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's laughable, but it's, it's serious business as well. It Cons would be laughable if, if you would think that it's a joke, and, and it's, it's laughable because it's so silly. Unfortunately, it's not a joke. These people are serious about yeah. this. They, I mean, they're serious about suspending this little boy with the finger that points like a gun, or this little boy that has the pastry that he chews into the shape of a gun, or these kids that are playing in their own front yard. But that knee-jerk liberalism also has deadly consequences. Uh, think about every time you hear the term gun-free zone in the news, why are, and what is the context of hearing the term gun-free zone? Well, you're hearing about a mass shooting in that gun-free zone. You think of the theater in Aurora, Colorado, uh, you know, Sandy Hook, Memorial, a horrible tragedy. But, but I, you know, I've pointed out, oh, but what, what if the PE coach and maybe a couple other, but the principal and another teacher had been armed, had been armed and trained to use their, their, their weapons in protection of those students. And instead of a sign that says, you know, on, on these premises, it's a gun-free zone, it says, warning, uh, anybody who attempts to harm the children on here, uh, our st faculty and staff are armed and will use deadly force in defense of the individuals on this premises. Uh, so gun-free zones uh, are like sitting ducks, uh, this liberal construct of a gun-free zone. It, it creates these kinds of environments for this kind of mass murder. It's horrible. Now the last thing anyone would want to do is to have to use a weapon. Of course. And if you're going to point a weapon at anyone, you, you do it uh, to destroy or to, to kill. Uh, and so that's the serious nature of it. So it, this is not anything lightly to be taken. Uh, these are uh, deadly weapons, obviously, but they are designed only in those extreme situations where your life is at, at jeopardy. Uh, where they can, where it's a life for a life, where your life is on the line and you have no choice but to, but to react. When you disarm a citizenry, what ultimately happens is the only ones who are armed are the bad guys who have an intention to rob, kill, or steal, or maim. And then you, as an individual innocent uh, citizen, are completely indefensible. Yeah. A woman walking to uh, the car in a parking lot at night from a shopping mall. Uh, and if everyone is disarmed and, and you don't have a right to be able to carry uh, weapons, uh, obviously, she could be a sitting target for someone who has uh, ill motives. Well, we've seen in states like you're from Florida, Matt, states where uh, it has become easier to carry concealed weapon for law-abiding citizens. We see that the, the violent crime rates typically... They've gone down. They plummet because it, uh, criminals, if anything, are, are cowardly. And if they're wondering, seeing, they see that, you know, that elderly woman across the way, and they're wondering if she may be packing a, a 357, they may think twice before they go try to strong arm rob her or do something worse. Well, go to Liberty Council's website. We certainly support the First Amendment and obviously the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment as well. We have a, a booklet, part of our Patriots Handbook on uh, American freedom and liberty, and it is on the Second Amendment. You can order that book uh, from the Patriots Handbook series. Call Liberty Council at 1-800-671-1776. You can also ask for our bumper sticker, I Second the First, and it's talking about 
supporting the Second Amendment. And it says amendments uh, worth uh, fighting or standing for. So ask for the bumper sticker on the Second Amendment and also the Patriots Handbook regarding the Second Amendment as well. For more information, visit Liberty Council's website, lc.org. You can also sign up for our emails, the Liberty Alert, and also the other Grass Fire Action email as well at Liberty Council's website, lc.org or libertycouncil.com. Also, you can ask for The Liberator, a monthly newsletter. And of course, remember Liberty Council in your prayers and your regular financial support. For more information, how you can support Liberty Council, visit lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.